The travel series Discovering David Dobrik is the latest mainstream TV show to risk it all on a viral YouTube star. Presented by Discovery Plus, the latest TV network to wish they hadn't even bothered, and probably regret even taking a meeting with someone whose poorly timed controversies came to light before they even aired his first Shark Week special. Oh, that sentence just gave me dry mouth because it's making my antidepressants work harder. And they're just getting started because not only does discovering David Dobrik consist of little more than following around the kind of privileged youngsters who would disrupt my historical walking tour, but everything besides that is basically a cheap Americanized tourist activity that conspicuously downplays the inclusion of Jeff Wittick, a former Vlog Squad member who almost died on camera when one of David's dangerous stunts remained dangerous. Toss in some national embarrassment and sexual misconduct allegations and you're halfway to discovering David Dobrik on another installment of Clip Breakdown. <laughs> Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other such content here on the web. And we break it into segments, like parts of your European tour with all of your besties. So we can look at each individual clip and decide if it's cringe-topia. Oh no, I hated that. Or, you know, let's just let it die there. That sentence was cringe-topia. Anyway, I'm all for YouTubers making the jump to television. But my thing is like, what is your act? Can you act? Are you a singer? And that's what I want to know about David Dobrik. Beyond any of his controversies, which we'll get to, what is it that David Dobrik even does that's worth putting on television? And don't say that you're a storyteller, David, because your home videos of reckless golf cart ownership do not constitute the Iliad. And you can kind of tell that Discovery Plus gave up on discovering Daybrick Dobrik as a show in that they did not spend any money marketing it, namely because a woman claimed that she ha was sexually assaulted on the night that she was filmed in one of David's vlogs. And the video that they filmed was sexual in nature. The dynamic is not promising from what we know about how men are. The man accused of sexual assault on that night goes by the name Dirty Dom. And David Dobrik still in interviews to this day and in a doc documentary that was recently aired at South by Southwest claims that he doesn't really see how this is connected to him, even though he is reported to have provided the alcohol that was imbibed that night that like reduced anyone's capacity to consent to sex. Anyway, aside from that and the excavator accident, it's safe to say David was lucky that Discovery Plus even decided to go through with airing this. And we can see how lucky David is, and you can kind of tell what lame cash grab type of reality show this is going to be when we look at the key art promoting this. What in David's disembodied hand is going on here? First of all, they got their man out here in a bowling shirt, which to me doesn't scream that this person has seen very much of the world. But overall, nothing says the network didn't want to risk giving this show a marketing budget. Quite like the fact that this whole thing is a doctored up headshot with a floating stock photo hand in front of it. Your destination is worldwide, David Dobrik and friends. Now I'm just jealous because that's that's where the rapper Pitbull lives. Of course, episode one of Discovering David Dobrik, where they go to Europe. Europe? That's not, a, I'm not talking like I normally talk, don't worry. <laughs> but David Dobrik has to introduce the whole vlog squad, meaning the members of them that signed the release to have their name and likeness used in this production. I'm super stoked to be able to like surprise people with things. Dude, why do you always say something about things? <laughs> There's something about it. I just love how people react to things. Both in the moment and after I upload a detailed video of my generosity to millions of fans. Obviously, it's not a bad thing if David Dobrik wants to spend his money on gifts for his fans and his friends. But I do think by making this Santa Claus sensibility the main focus of his content, he's really just fueling people's materialism and validating these kids' beliefs that a PlayStation 4 will make them happy. Also, I don't like that David acts like he does this purely for the private satisfaction of seeing the look on people's faces. He's in it solely for the love of giving out free cars. Except for when he also makes a point to videotape the person crying about how he's such a nice person and then turning that footage into content so that he can write the entire purchase off as a business expense. 
How about instead of taping your cash to a Frisbee and throwing it out to people who live in the shadow of your mansion, why not devote those resources towards helping educate the public, specifically young men and boys, about not using their power or privilege to coerce people into sexual situations they don't want? Maybe then it will just seem a little bit more like you're actually working to fight one of the injustices that you built your fortune on. This doesn't make me just automatically think you're a good person because I don't think anyone ever alleged that you were involved in not giving out enough Xboxes to the people on this street, you know? That's not the crime. I smell a diversion. When someone's this public about all of the good stuff they're doing, it's like, Sometimes being a good person just means taking a responsibility for what happened. The fact that everyone in that party was there to make a cool vlog for him is like makes him implicitly like involved in the power dynamic there. Regardless, we have to meet the whole gang of David's vlog squad. Vlog squad! Natalie works with me since forever. Jason is <laughs> obviously our dad of the group. Todd is my wonderful boyfriend. He's a good looking guy of the group, right? I don't know, Natalie. Are you asking me or telling me? And what does it matter when being the good looking guy in the group just means having the least hateable face? Also, I find it very unnecessary when a gaggle of cishet men over 30 need to designate somebody as the dad of their friend group. Especially if the dad is also trying to get David's 20 something fans drunk enough to sleep with him. Jason Nash here gained his following because he was always like the old friend in the group since the Vine days. All of it back in 2016, but now it's getting sad when people like this call him the dad of their group because they're old too. I'm just saying demographically speaking, there's really no difference between me, someone who's 30 plus, and somebody who's 50 who is a college educated person in the workforce from the same socioeconomic class. As people who are mostly over 30, they have more in common with Jason Nash than they did not. I feel like influencers like David, whose initial fan base was built off of this like goofy older cousin on eternal summer vacation energy. Like they feel the need to keep that attitude up like school's out for summer even when they're pushing 30. Eventually you have to stop selling yourself as a cool trendy young person and start realizing yourself as an actual fully realized adult. All right, you've convinced me. I'm going to write a book on my self-taught psychology theories. My first one is going to be called Settle Down now, a guide to growing up for the kids who are friends with their gym teacher in high school. I don't know why my disembodied hand looks so weird there. I've been having a hard time getting my flesh to show up on camera. This is all full coverage body paint. Okay, enough interruptions with my book launch. Let's meet the rest of David's friends. Jonah, he's really funny, but also incredibly obnoxious. Susie is Jonah's sister. What I love about Susie is also what I hate about Susie, is that she's loud. Clearly the production team thought Jonah and Susie would make for good television, and they thought wrong. With this type of group dynamic, you can almost feel when there are people trying desperately to live up to their class clown expectations. It's like one thing if all of your friends think you're the funniest person on earth, but Guess what? I'm not laughing. Too much of this show's format relied on just having the vlog squad show up to a location and letting the magic happen. As white people, we've already tried that, David Dobrik, and that's why we have colonialism. So maybe write an outline. Another character you'll frequently see in the vlog squad is Jeff Wittick, the person who almost died while performing an unsafe stunt for David's vlog. He probably doesn't get a formal introduction due to the falling out that resulted of that life-changing Injury, although they kind of make it impossible to ignore his presence. You guys want to get ice cream? Jeff, David, I'm going to send you a signed copy of my book, Settle Down Now, which hasn't been written or printed yet, but we'll fix that in post. I think you'll find my chapter on horseplay very enlightening. It's called, if you roughhouse with your friends as an adult, women will be scared to sleep with you. I'm curious why dangerous stunts, like the one that maimed his friend, are still the only thing that David has to offer his audience at a television level. Let alone why does YouTube 
still consider that type of content worthy of putting on the trending page uh, for impressionable kids. Again, David tries to avoid blame for this whole accident by claiming that Jeff Wittick wanted so badly to push himself so far to be swung on this excavator, even though David Dobrik was the one controlling the excavator. So that to me is like at least 50-50 culpability. And it's absurd that you would think otherwise, let alone the fact that there's already an imbalance of power because why is that excavator there? Why are they swinging on it in the first place? Whose idea was it to film all of this and whose careers kind of an income to at least depend on being there as part of David's trip and video. It's like, even though you're, they're your friends, you're also their employer by like having them there to do work for you. So I'm just curious why that's not clear. Anyway, these people are so funny. It's so worth amplifying these voices. I would like to talk to one David Dobrik. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell when this one thinks he delivered a punchline because he'll look to other people for approval like a kid at a spelling bee. Will that little skit or whatever be 10 times funnier when we see it in a much closer angle from David's vlog that he's also simultaneously recording? I don't think mainstream television fully understands how little I care what's going on in that clowny man child's DSLR camera. I'm shooting my own self-important 4K footage here. It seems like even David Dobrik is getting a little concerned when his home country of the Slovak Republic isn't providing him with TV ready tourism footage, even though he's just showing up without having scouted the location first. The whole thing lights up at night. We came at a bad time. 20 years later, as an adult, things are not <laughs> what they lived up to me as a kid or even as a TV show about interesting people traveling and doing things. It's not living up to that memory either. If I remember correctly, that's what the show was pitched as. Okay, I feel like my eyes are turning red because this goop that is the glitter is making them turn red. <laughs> and that's my haiku. I wanna try this ice cream. Green apple flavor, mm-hmm. That's the best Skittle. The green apple ice cream tasted like butt crack. It just, it just tasted like I like swiped someone's like butt crack and like I, I like taste tested it. Okay, well, that's really not the safest way to test a butt crack's purity. I believe in a chemistry class, they would have you waft it towards your face, but there is no way that green apple ice cream is anything but delicious. So I don't know what this guy is talking about any more than I know why they shot these interview segments on the terrace of their hotel suite in Greece. I can see the railing. Why you got a railing in me? Why you got a railing in me shot? That's what they call it in film school. In order to like, I guess, fully introduce to us and a new audience, presumably who David Dobrik is, they're showing us a lot of footage, like prolonged periods of footage from his vlogs that already exist for free on YouTube. So glad I paid for the premium Discovery Plus. My parents did, I just used the password, but I could go on all day about David Dobrik, but it's still a better use of my time than waiting on hold to talk to a human at a traditional bank. That's why I'm a huge fan of the sponsor of today's video, Al Albert, which is better than any traditional bank account you've ever used before. I've personally been savaged by up to $35 overdraft fees at my traditional bank, and they charge me just to have an account. Maintenance fees or minimum balances. Albert is amazing because it's free to sign up and super easy to use. Don't just open a savings account and hope you remember to put money into it. Albert will look at your income and expenses and find where you can save extra cash, and then it'll automatically move money into your savings account a few dollars at a time and like magic you'll be surprised at how much you're putting away plus using the albert app you can get five to twenty percent cash back at some of my favorite merchants like starbucks for example and if you're like me and find managing your finances hard and stressful albert has a team of financial experts they call geniuses that are there to help take a look at your situation and make a plan if you feel stuck click the link in the description box to download the albert app today for a limited time when you open in a checking account and connect a qualifying direct deposit, you'll get $150. My absolute favorite video is where I married Jason's mom. I'm flying to Boston to propose to Jason's mom, and then I'm gonna marry her in Vegas, and I'm gonna honeymoon with her in Hawaii. <laughs> this is my new wife. <laughs> Okay, guys, in no way do you all need to be acting like riled up Dobermans right now. This whole gag is nothing new anyway. Just more straight people making a punchline out of the sacred institution
definition of marriage that is still denied to same-sex couples in 164 out of 195 countries on Earth. And I'm so glad I found the time to talk to you about that here while David uses his screen time to reminisce about some YouTube video where he pulled off the most long-winded joke by severely overestimating how much of a serve it would be to briefly marry his friend's mom. Did you get the laugh? Did you save the country? Did you get the guy? Did you get the job? Is your house any bigger? So the first leg of David's trip is to visit his home country of Slovakia or the Slovak Republic where he can get his green card so he can travel more freely as an American citizen. So he's visiting his grandmother in her town. Now, I'll be honest, I'm turned on right now. <laughs> she wasn't into me. <laughs> <laughs> what two buttons do I press to call 911? Screenshot. It's also absurd to me that someone who's at the center of a sexual misconduct scandal would even continue making it a part of their brand to have competitive conquests by sleeping with people close to the, each other's friends. Like, can you not grow up? Why is this what you're doing when we already are mad at you for doing that? You must really have nothing else to say. And I'm serious, can he sing? Can he try singing some show tunes? So at least we can see if we can shake some sort of use out of this. We could put him in plays if he's good at singing. He can be like the Shia LaBeouf of community theater, but I'm not saying I like it. Either way, or whatever, just go on your tour of the country. So annoyed. Sorry, it does feel like they're my siblings and I'm responsible for them in some way. What do you know about it, fat ass? <laughs> so when they're being really loud, it like all feels like it's like trickling down on me. Oh, so you take responsibility for the people who misbehave on behalf of your TV show, but those girls who were hurt on the set of your vlog are somehow, you know, as it was their fault is what you're saying. And then for another video, when you lost control of the machine that you were controlling, it was the other person's fault for pushing you to make that a thing for your video. Wow, that logic is watertight, like a fractured skull. Jeff Wittick did survive. And from the latest accounts, it seems like he has not had contact with David Dobrik. David is like embarrassed of his friends for being kind of disrespectful at this Greek monument, but He's not that much better. Pillars. No touch. Is it true that it's illegal to take rocks from here? It's illegal. Put it down. I feel like you don't know what's going on, Susie. Uh, I David Dobrik really thought it was okay to take chunks of archaeological artifact home with him like they were pieces of the Berlin Wall in the 90s. Here, David, try and think of it like that time where you tweeted for your fans to stop coming to your house to take pictures. Only in this case, you're the fan showing up to someone else's McMansion. And instead of taking pictures, you're taking pricelessly rare signs of an ancient human civilization. Imagine if people could just go up and take chunks of the Parthenon, like there would be people like him carving out pieces with a pickaxe for the name of a YouTube video. They would be literally pissing on the Greek statues and calling it TikTok. I've seen what they do. Later on in Greece, it seems like David has a little bit of a choosy palate. <laughs> That's a democratic way of saying someone's a picky eater. He doesn't eat fish. Oh, really? No, he doesn't eat fish. <laughs> yeah, we know he's okay. Are you okay? Because your whole crew tensed up when you accidentally swallowed a small piece of fish. They're like, breathe through your nose. Does anyone have a tongue scraper? We need at least a four piece non-spicy chicken nugget meal from Wendy's or he might not make it. I pretty much eat anything. So I find it funny when people are like, I won't eat that when they're not allergic to it. It's like, at least take a bite, right? But I also know that some people are very averse to certain foods and textures and it makes them gag and I'm like, we don't want that now. No one said make yourself vom on the dom, you nom. So because there's no substance to this show, because the story production is non-existent, they try to shoehorn in these life lessons by just asking people in their 50s what they think about certain vague philosophical topics. It's like, just ask Jason Nash. He's right there with you with two kids. You know you know yourself. How do I know having a conscience is key? David's like, oh, well, I don't have a conscience. I do, however, have a key. It's to this heavy duty excavator I'm planning to swing my friend around on later. Do you mind taking pictures? I hate this forced development. You know, it's like, I don't want just some cheesy non-advice that I could get from anyone's dad and uncle. <laughs> if you're not gonna give me Anthony Bourdain, no reservation type of musings, then they need to manufacture some drama, yell at each other, steal someone's passport, get drunk at a casino. We know 
know David can't be Anthony Bourdain because he doesn't appreciate complex flavors. So then they should at least try and give me that one season of Jersey Shore where they all go and embarrass us in Sicily. Not Sicily, I know it was Florence. Florence, Italy. I'm very aware. So sorry. I would love to visit one day. Out of all of the crew positions that they hired for this show or that they clearly had, you know, budgeted or any one of these people who has half a brain could have done it, like been the research person and actually provided David with some actual travel insight that he could give. He could have met up with a local fan in each of these places and given like their no reservation style view of the best food, the best, you know, vlogging spots, the coolest places to go skateboarding, whatever the f is David's stupid brand. They could have given it to us in like a travel series type of way, a way that feels like enhanced access, not just more of the same stuff that we can find on his YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash I dumb douche. That's his URL. Hashtag I dumb douche. Nick DeRamio dumb douche. Nick DeRamio dumb douche. That's the jingle for my new douche brand. That's the jingle for my new douche. They're all in the van. Did you know that David was bullied? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to discredit anybody's experience being bullied. Nobody's one bullying experience was any easier than another. I'm not here to judge or invalidate anyone's pain or trauma, but we all know it's fun too anyway. Were you basketball. bullied? Uh, yeah. You were bullied? Yeah, there was these kids, they'd call me Justin Bieber on the bus. They were like classic, like mean bullies. Yeah, classic. I had kids who would call me Nicole and lock me in the girl's bathroom with the lights off, but sure, let's have David speak at the White House about bullying because he would get underhanded compliments about how pretty his hair looked. He was like, it was really hard having people say I looked like Justin Bieber because I wanted to look like Ashton Kutcher. Well, Justin Bieber's close enough. It's the same difference. Like, uh, just a guy that any girl's racist grandparents would love. Well, guess what? David Dobrik, you're not my type, so you can stop sending me all of those love letters on your creamy, silky stationery spritzed with your signature fragrance, white diamonds. Yeah, there's a lot you don't know about my life, okay? My personal life behind the scenes. Hashtag satire, no libel. Okay, so I'm talking a lot, lot tonight. That's an interesting, we don't love that. They visit some underprivileged kids. I believe they are child refugees. I really don't know why they couldn't have solidified just a couple travel facts for David to spit out at the camera because this feels like too much of the wrong kind of information. <laughs> It's millions of years old. Actually, we don't know how old it is. <laughs> I don't wear underwear, you can't pants me. Not David going on this full European tour in those little soccer shorts with his unsupported testicles waving free as the American flag. If I was traveling with him, I'd be like, I don't care if he paid for my plane ticket. He needs to cross his legs on the next commuter train because all of Eastern Europe has seen his scrotum so far. How are you not gonna wear underwear and then brag about that? Like in Palm Springs, that's like a kink community thing. So I'm not kink shaming. David Dobrik, that's travel shaming though. Chafe shaming. You're gonna chafe if you're walking around Europe all day. I told you I'm talking a lot today. Also, why are they doing this? I don't care about ATVs or four wheelers or the fact that they're the same thing. I just said extra words because I can't stop. <laughs> I'm pretty excited about it. I'm stoked. Anything with wheels, I'm down for. Anything with wheels, I love. I love anything with cars, vehicles. Love you, baby. Say it was love at first sight. Listen, I don't care that Jonah wants to take the muffler of his car off of birth control pills because as I just said, I am into marriage equality. But I'm almost positive that this merry gang of miscreants could have ridden four wheelers back in LA without a problem. So why is this what they're doing in Europe? The insider travel access that we're discovering with David Dobrik is basically just watching some rich kids go on excursions that TV producers set up for them while they go on their little paid vacation. It's if I sound bitter, it's not because I'm bitter. I'm bitter because there's like, I thought there was only two episodes and I was like, that's a cute like little, it came to life and then it died right away. That had a spring and a summer. But no, then another third episode came out and I'm tired of 45 minute things that suck. <laughs> they like mess around with a condor. I mean like, yes, this would be cool too, but you could definitely find an animal trainer in LA. But David's like, this is somehow related to travel. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> that falcon is like, I'm so sorry, David. I could have sworn this was a wig and I was gonna snatch it off and fly away and as like a funny joke. But now it seems like my claw is stuck in a thick patina of Rogaine foam that's sort of settled on your scalp like the crystallized sap in Jurassic Park. But anyway, falcon birds, falcon birds. Oh, and then <laughs> I don't think we need, like you can find meaning for things without trying to make up revisionist history. Like don't force this like we came from hard backgrounds when the most you have as an example is some kids being mean to you on the bus once and having a normal amount of money before having an extreme amount of wealth. Find some other way of infusing meaning into the storyline of this series, you know? Like there's no reason why David's going to all of these places. Is he like starting a fellowship where he helps like teach a mentor a new vlogger in each land or whatever, or helps some family use the internet to create an income? Like if he's such a genius, maybe that's his thing. But I don't I don't know why I'm the one coming up with the, all the ideas here, David and Discovery Plus. God, not to be rude, in case you do want to hire me as a consultant. I think I can work out some sort of rate, but if David Dobrik wants to get on a Skype call with me, I'm wearing my laciest getup. <laughs> <laughs> I'm two years older than him. I think that's like 10 years too old. 10 to 12 years too old for David Dobrik's fit crowd. Anyway, what are you kids talking about? Not knowing like if I can afford rent or if I can right. get enough food. Like I'm so happy those are my issues anymore. And now I have like more emotional issues. I think all of us, all four of us have, n have come, have not have. That was really astute, Susie, and I hope you can work it into your travel memoir that results from this trip. Anyway, they're all talking on a boat, so I feel like they're trying to wrap this episode up. Are you all sobbing at home? Everyone who's out there living paycheck to paycheck? Gratitude over the fact that David Dobrik no longer lives paycheck to paycheck. One of us made it. Like, I know they were kind of talking about putting Harriet Tubman on the $20 bill, but when you think about it, David Dobrik has more subscribers. His vlogs get way more views than her, do and frankly he just goes harder on all of his social media than Harriet Tubman and he finally deserves recognition for that give us some meaningful voiceover David before I say some more words be thankful for what you have I knew that, but I have a completely different perspective of what that means now. And it never would have happened if I hadn't come here and briefly played soccer with those poor kids. Amen. And that's all they wrote for David Dobrik's Discovering Dum 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 Dum. I love a dum dum, a bag of dum dums in the waiting room. That's what I call my living room when I'm waiting for the next show to start. What do you guys think of this travel show? What do you think of the Jeff Wittick? Oh, I hope his name isn't Wittick because that's that's all I'll hear in the comments. Just in case I'll give it a clean recording of that wittyick and I can lay it back in. Let me know in the comments below all of your thoughts on the drama, even though I think drama is a little dismissive of the weight of these allegations against David Dobrik and crew. But also give this video a big thumbs up if you wanna see more videos breaking down such YouTube type of trending topics. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week and I feel like it's fine if you don't want to watch every video I upload, but I promise you each one is going to make you laugh in its own special way. So don't skip over one. And sometimes people are like, you already did this movie. And I'm like, no, you might just be remembering it twice. So watch it three times to be sure. Just kidding. Anyway, give this video a big thumbs up. Don't forget to click subscribe. I've got merch and a Patreon where you can access exclusive bonus episodes and virtual watch parties. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for uh, dancing down the lane when you do a bunny hop with me. Dancing down the lane when you do the bunny hop with me. I will see you next time.